do it. You scrawled on this video to do it. It's your boy, Daddy Scobar Drew Shall we back with another big body banger? You feel me? Listen, now I'm saying today we got something cool, something a little spicy, you know, something, something a little calm. You feel me? We got some 15 strange animal phenomenons that happened on our planet itself, the planet Earth. You know what I'm saying? Apparently, it's been some rain and rain and snakes. You know what I'm saying? Some, 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 well, all I saw was rain snakes. That was the thumbnail, you feel me? But this video was re recommended to me by this man on Instagram, at Chocolate Boy Jet. Jo Chocolate Boy Joe? Man, it went Chocolate Boy Joe. That's the best thing you come up with, man. But shout out to you for recommending me this Chocolate Boy Joe. And then his name thing is Coco Boy Joe. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I, I feel like you could have came with something a little better. But shout out to you, man. Thank you for the video. If y'all want to react to anything specific, hit me over there on Instagram at Juber underscore. I'm saying y'all the Before we get to the video, joy.com. I say my two third free bundle up to yourself $50. Copy yourself with joy so you can be super sexy with super sexy waves and cover your ugly hairline and your big old forehead. And lay your edges too if you're a lady. And keep your hair down if you're a lady too. Or keep your head down if you're a dude too with braids. I'm saying it's I got stuff for everybody. If you just want to be sexy, you need a Jew right. That's all I'm saying. But without further ado, just hop right into this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, hey. Woo, what a music. Nature never ceases to amaze. These animal kingdom oddities the heck is that? seem like urban legends, oh, my but dates. they all actually happened. And at real life scientists scratching their heads, here are 15 strange animals. That's fish? Oh no. Phenomena that happened they probably there. stink over there. While you're here, be sure to smash the like button. I'm gonna do it for y'all. Y'all gotta smash the like button for me too, man. Content. Smash the like button for me, because I did 15, it for them. Narcisse Snake Dens. Canada usually seems like such a non-scary place. The pristine lakes, the gentle manners, the political tolerance, the free-flowing sorics. It's not exactly a place you'd think would be teeming with snakes just below the surface. And that's true. As long as you don't hang out. Let me go to this video just point this out. I'm not really scared of snakes, you know what I'm saying? But raining snakes, ah, gotta dodge it. You gotta dub it, I'm not doing that. But I'm not scared of snakes, you know what I'm saying? In Narcisse, Manitoba. Every spring and autumn, the largest congregation of snakes anywhere in the world is found in this area, drawing visitors from across the globe. For between one and three weeks at a particular spot along Highway 17, tens of thousands of red-sided garter snakes make their way above ground from inside the fissures in the limestone, yeah. looking nah. for mates. Not doing it. They congregate in rocky pits, weaving together to form vast, living, moving tapestries of snakes that can be as wide as 20 feet across. A mass of snakes is clearly audible between the hissing and the sound of scales rubbing together. When they are finished with their business in the spring, the garters split from their dens along the highway to nearby wetlands for the summer to bask in the sunshine and then return to Narcisse. So they, you tell me these snakes come out, right? All of them is like they got a timer on a watch, right? Okay, a clock. Time to get some snake coochie. That's what they do. And then they all just go up out at the same time and look for some snake coochie. Okay, that's what we do. It's in the fall. The slither back on the ground and do it all over again. Okay. Number 14. Headless Chicken. In 1945, farmer Lloyd Olson took one of his many chickens to the chopping block to prepare dinner for his family. After decapitating the chicken, something... Oh, why didn't show me that? I don't want to see that. Die. The headless chicken, which the family later named Mike, continued to wander around the farm and steadfastly refused to be turned into the Olsons. So you telling me the man cut the neck off of the chicken, right? Wait, do chickens survive with their neck? Ain't that, ain't that like a saying thing where it's like you're running around with a chick, like a chicken with no neck or no head? Isn't that a saying? Can chickens survive without their head? That man standing right there without a head, I don't know what the heck going on right there. I ain't gonna lie to you, seems pretty demonic to me. I'm not playing with that. Supper. The Olsons discovered that they could still feed and water Mike by way of an eyedropper inserted into his neck hole. After that, they took the chicken out on the road, showing him off as Mike the Headless Chicken. What magic kept Mike alive? Wait, she so they was just like using a dropper to put food in his whatever that is at the top of his body? And it, they just was just squeeze it in there and hope it goes in the right tube to feed him? Man, I would have ate that sucker a long time ago. Bro. Luck, as it happens, 
Scientists at the University of Utah who examined Mike found that Olsen barely missed Mike's brainstem, which allowed him to continue walking and moving even after his decapitation. Unfortunately, Mike died when his family lost his eyedropper and were unable to help him when he began to choke on a kernel of corn. Wait a minute! Y'all lost the eyedropper? And then you couldn't get another eyedropper? First of all, first of all, first and foremost, you couldn't get another eyedropper, right? You lost eyedropper, you couldn't get another eyedropper, so then you started feeding him whole food, and then his neck choked on a piece of kernel? What type of stupid story is this, man? What's really going on, bro? Number 13, Raining Birds. Those is birds? In a small town in Arkansas, USA, the locals were just carrying about their day, doing very mundane things until suddenly, in 2012, the whole town witnessed something rather unusual. It started to rain ravens. Dead ravens, obviously, but it was raining birds. It rained over 5,000 dead blackbirds in the early hours of New Year's Day in 2012. What's the craziest thing about this? This wasn't the first time it happened. It was the second time that it happened. We don't know if it happened a third time since then, but if it did, I wonder what the locals would think then. Number 12, cocooned trees. In 2010, 10 years worth of rainfall poured into Pakistani I wasn't gonna say nothing about the dying birds just flowing out of the freaking sky, but where did they all come from? That's all I'm saying. Cities and villages in less than a week, completely ravaging the affected areas. An unexpected side effect of the flooding in parts of Pakistan had seen that millions of spiders climbed up into the trees to escape the rising floodwaters. Because of the scale of the flooding and the fact that the water had taken so long to recede, many trees have become cocooned in spiders' webs. Spiders have built massive webs on trees, turning them into ghostly cocoons. Such a phenomenon has never been seen before. Number 11. Germany's Bursting Toads Hamburg is often known as an idyllic port city of book publishers and media giants. Lately, however, the city's peace and quiet has been interrupted by a sickening natural oddity. Over a thousand of the city's greenish-brown toads have swelled up to almost four times their normal. The heck is that? I'll be the type of person to take a pen and just like pop it and see what the heck come out of that, general. Why is it puffed up like that? Like the puffer fish from freaking SpongeBob at this point. Surprise, and then bang, exploded. Sending horrific entrails and body. The man just exploded. Wait, 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 wait. Size and then bang, exploded. Sending horrific entrails and body parts several feet into the pristine air. Man, what? Some residents have nicknamed their city's once bucolic lake the Pond of Death, and officials have cordoned off the area for investigation. Vets and animal welfare agencies have spent days puzzling over the deeply troubling and downright disgusting mystery. Is it a fungus? Is it a virus? Are the toads simply suicidal? Or the how do they suicide? How do they go blow themselves up? They suicidal. You can't. Ain't nobody. You. You. If you suicide, you can't blow yourself up. That's not how stuff works. Speculation was finally put to rest when Frank Mutschmann, one of Germany's top experts on amphibians, cracked the case. And the explanation was even more shocking than the toads' violent deaths. The massacre was apparently the work of a highly intelligent species of crow. Frank what? examined both living and dead specimens of the Hamburg toads, and what he found was truly chilling. Identical circular incisions on their backs, just the size of a bird's beak. He also figured out that all the amphibians had their livers missing. There were no bites or scratch marks, so we knew the toads weren't being attacked by a raccoon or a rat, which would have also eaten the entire toad, Frank said. It was clearly the work of crows, which are clever enough to know the toad's skin is toxic, and realize the liver is the only part what so so they they took the stuff the, the the birds swooped down took only the liver out of the toad because they knew the toad skin was toxic they ate the liver then the liver was out of the toad so the toad everything it was eating was just like building up and it made the toad explode is that how it works worth eating only once the liver is gone does the toad realize it's being attacked it puffs itself up as a natural defense mechanism. But since it doesn't have a diaphragm or ribs, without the liver, there's nothing to hold the rest of its organs in. The lungs stretch out of all proportion and rip. The rest of the organs simply expel themselves. Number 10. How is the ravens that smart, though? That's what I'm trying to figure out. What the heck just happened? Murmurations. 
Individually, a European starling is little more than a common blackbird. They're practically everywhere. More than 200 million are in North America alone, singing their chirpy little songs and becoming to many backyard growers and full-time farmers a bit on the pesty side. Collectively, though, starlings transform into something else entirely. Together, in flight, in mesmerizing flocks that sometimes number in the hundreds of thousands, they are a breath-stealing wonder, a pulsating, swooping, living, harmonized whole seemingly defying the laws of nature while defining nature itself. Hey, that's birds? What the fuck is really going on? Where is this stuff happening? Have I been living under a freaking rock? I ain't seen none of this stupid stuff happening. I ain't never seen no hundreds of thousands of freaking birds fly at the same time. I seen a couple go on like the light pole or something like that at the same time. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool, but this is, what the fuck going on? This is all the birds in the entire freaking world formation, forming up freaking stuff. In the 1930s, famed ornithologist Edmund Sellers suggested that birds moving in murmurations were using some sort of telepathy to transmit their flying intentions. They must think collectively, all at the same time, a flash out of so many brains. They build in stuff in the thought air. transference, or what, in birds. As the years wore on, we found out that's not quite it. In the 1950s, scientists studying insects and fish and other collective animal behavior posited that group movement is more of a stunningly fast response to others in the flock rather than some innate mind-reading ability or a command from the group leader. Number 9. Red Crab Migration Not happening. Once a year, something incredible happens on Christmas Island. Around 50 million red crabs are estimated to live on Christmas Island. Who's counting that? Who's counting 50 million? How do you know it's 50 million? You just looking like, yeah, it looks like 50 million to me. Like, who's, who's counting that? Play the freaking video. Located in the Indian Ocean off the northwestern coast of Australia, which it is a part of. Between October and December, at the beginning of the wet season, these animals start an incredible journey across the land, leaving their homes in the inland to go to the seaside and lay their eggs. The migration begins when adult crabs leave their burrows in the dense jungle and walk to the beach, dipping in the ocean to replenish body salts. Male crabs dig burrows in the sand which they defend from other crabs while they try to mate with the females then migrate back home while the females stay with their eggs. After t oh, what in the hit and run is going on here? The, the crabs clap the other crabs, impregnate them, then leave them with the kid? <sighs> Man, what in the single mother, um, freaking, what's, what pandemic is going on in the crab world? Two to three weeks, the female crabs put their eggs into the ocean and oh, start whoa, their whoa, own whoa, 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 what's he doing? After two to three weeks, the female crabs put their eggs into the ocean. <laughs> Oh, man, they get freaky in the water. After two okay. to three the female crabs okay. put their eggs in the water. Okay, show them twerking and stuff like that in the water. Do y'all think, Miss Crab, you know what I'm saying? Tiny creatures turn beaches red before slowly progressing across the island, crossing Dang. roads and meandering around houses. Yeah, that seemed like 50 million. With the adults. Four years later, the crabs are ready to make their own migration to the beach to mate and begin the life cycle all over again. All phases of the migration are popular tourist attractions. With visitors time in yeah, ain't no way I'm stepping in that. to see the unique sight as the crabs only live on Christmas Island. Number eight, beached fish or not? That's disgusting. Speaking of raining weird creatures, on New Year's Eve in Norway, people are singing, eating, drinking, making merry and all that, and the fish from the sea decided that they didn't want to be left out of these celebrations anymore and basically beached themselves on a long stretch of coast in Dang, northern Norway. it probably stopped. Estimated 20 tons of fish just beached there. We say estimated because before officials could even make a proper count and begin clean-up operations, the fish just upped and vanished. No one has any idea what happened to call... Okay, all them fish did not just up and vanish out of nowhere, bro. That's, that's not how fish work. They, they not teleportation devices. They somewhere. I know that thing stunk. I know over there stunk. It probably stuck up the whole world how stank that was over there. That's mad fish. It was such a massive amount of obviously dead fish to just completely disappear. Some Number whale finally came and just opened his mouth. Suicides. Whales? Short-finned pilot whale is a large species of dolphin with a dark grey body and a bulbous head. It's an intensely social animal that spends its life in the company of others. And that, sadly, is also how it sometimes dies. In March 2018, Dang. around 150 short-finned pilot whales stranded themselves at Hamlin Bay, a site on Australia's western coast, Dang. around 200 miles south of Perth. R.I.P. the homies, bro. staff and volunteers had hauled six survivors back into the sea, but their fate is still uncertain. Rescued whales often re-strand themselves, and nightfall will make their movements harder to track. 
Western Australia is no stranger to mass whale strandings. Nine years before, to the day, 80 long-finned pilot whales, a closely related species, stranded themselves in the very same spot. They're using cranes to push them back in the water? What's really going on? Animal abuse? Three years before, again, almost to the day, around 20 long-finned pilot whales washed up at Bunbury, about 70 miles to the north. And those incidents pale in comparison to the largest mass stranding ever documented in the region. This isn't a uniquely Australian problem. New Zealand's Fair Whale Spit is a notorious whale trap where pilot whales regularly strand. Up to 650 long-finned pilot whales beached there last February, of which 400 or so were saved. Cape Cod is another hot spot and sees an average of 220... Cape Cod is in Jersey, right? I'm pretty sure. Six stranded whales and dolphins every year. Given this long history, it's unclear if these events have become any more frequent of late, or if they're simply easier to spot in an interconnected world. Still, there is something deeply unsettling about mass strandings. Cetaceans, the group that includes whales and dolphins, are highly intelligent and beautifully adapted to life in the water. Why would they leave the aquatic world to risk death? And why do so many of them do so at the same, at the same time? time? That's what I'm thinking, man. Really knows. There's a multitude of hypotheses and few firm answers. Number six, Sea of Stars. Oh, that's beautiful. As if the islands of the Maldives weren't already heaven on Earth, come nighttime, Vardu Island reveals another mystical surprise. Glowing blue waves lapping the sandy shore like oh, that's something lit. of a fantasy island. As the sun sets below what the, is that? That's the lit. island's waters are taken over by a shimmering sight, they light up a glittery spread of blue reflecting the sky. That's so far. This island in particular is known for its amazing sea of stars, where the waters glow neon blue at night. A tiny microorganism, a phytoplankton called Dinoflagellates, reacts with oxygen under the water and is triggered to produce this blue glow when it feels movement. Therefore, waters where these small phytoplankton live sparkle as if mirroring or capturing the stars. Number five, That's wave so. of locusts. Weeks before the coronavirus spread through much of the world, parts of Africa were already threatened by another kind of plague, the biggest locust outbreak some countries had seen in 70 years. Now, the second wave of the voracious insect, some 20 times the size of the first, is arriving. Billions of the young desert locusts are winging in from breeding grounds in Somalia in search of fresh vegetation springing up with seasonal rains. It's the locusts that everyone is talking about, said Uweri Abaket, a farmer in Uganda. Once they land in your garden, they do total destruction. Some people will even tell you that the locusts are more destructive than the coronavirus. There are even some who- Cause they be eating all the farm food and stuff like that, right? Like the locusts, I think locusts is in the Bible too. Like that's one of the plays, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But like, all them bugs, man, I do not rock with it. How do you get rid of the locusts though? They ain't big, they be big, they be like, they're big. They be like grasshopper big, I don't know. I don't believe that the virus will reach here. The UN Food and Agriculture Organization has called the locust outbreak, caused in part by climate change, an unprecedented threat to food security and livelihoods. The UN has raised its aid appeal from $76 million to $153 million, saying immediate action is needed before more rainfall fuels further growth in locust numbers. So far, the FAO has collected $111 million in cash or pledges. Number 4. Monarch Butterfly Migration while animal migration in general remains mysterious, the migration pattern of the monarch butterfly is particularly noteworthy. Fun fact, I used to be scared of butterflies. <clears throat> I'm not scared to admit it or afraid or embarrassed. Or... I used to be scared of butterflies because they move so weird. You know what I mean? They don't just like fly regularly like a uh, fly, fly like this, boom. Butterflies, they be like, they be going all over the freaking place randomly, just sp spatatic, whatever the word is called. It's just all, it's quick and Scary and I don't like that because like the butterfly could be flying that way now all of a sudden it turn to you and just start Going stupid you feel me? I hate that the study of the migrations of this strikingly colored orange and black creature has led to remarkable theories and a few puzzling questions The bulk of monarchs residing east of the Rocky Mountains fly to a specific region in the mountains of central Mexico Somewhere between a hundred and a hundred and fifty million butterflies travel this route each fall the monarchs remain at these overwintering sites until the following spring when they return north. The timing of this annual migration is theorized to be linked to the changes in the amount of daylight that begin to occur at this time of year. The variability of day and night temperatures that take place in late August and September probably also help trigger the migrations to Mexico. 
Why they like this part of Mexico is apparent. No one knows, Forest huh? The locations in the mountains provide an ideal climate for overwintering. The big mystery in the process is how do monarchs find the same site each year? Because they be talking to each other. I'm telling y'all, they government issued species. Maybe not government issued, I don't know. But they, they got some type of mind telepathy talker and stuff. All of them, they all like the Life same. of a monarch butterfly is only six months, which means each new generation of butterflies migrates without an older generation to lead the way. Wait, 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 what? Which means each new generation... Yeah. The lifespan of a monarch butterfly is only six months. They only live for six months? So I wasn't killing the butterflies I used to catch? They just died regularly? Oh, that makes me feel so good about myself. I thought they would be, like, dying. Like, I was killing them, like, doing something wrong. But they only live six months? That's pretty good. You know, I probably only had it for, like, two weeks. But it's, it's still pretty good because they weren't going to live much, live much longer after that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't doing nothing wrong, I guess. Which means each new generation of butterflies migrates without an older generation to lead the way. How do they end up at the same locations year after year? One theory is that monarchs use the Earth's magnetic field to guide them to this specific area. Another theory is that they are guided by the polarization of the sun's rays. Scientists had come with so many theories, but the mystery still remains. Number 3. Monkey Invasion Oh, Shock. that ain't for me. They talking about they may not say nothing racist right now. I'm talking about monkey invasion in Africa, huh? <laughs> I know what you're trying to say, you slick mother sucker. No, I'm saying. Shocked, populations locked down and tourists stay home. Wildlife is encroaching into formerly no-go urban territory. But while some, like the wild goats of North Wales, seem to be enjoying their new domains, others, like the monkeys of Laburi, Thailand, are clearly hungry and missing people. Pictures of animals roaming out deserted streets might at first glance seem cute or fun, but they're also a stark illustration of the economic paralysis caused by the coronavirus crisis and a reminder of the close relationships between humans and animals. The negative impact on animals of people staying indoors is clearly seen in the Thai city of Lopuri, northeast of Bangkok. Locals have described vast brawls of monkeys estimated at around a thousand in one report. Man, I'm taking one of them John's bringing them back home. I want one. I think they'd be aggressive though, I don't know. But I wish that John would be aggressive. It's like you're right in your face, man. I'm gonna treat you like a human being. Yeah, you wanna be acting like a human being, standing up on two legs and stuff, you getting slapped like a human being. That's all I'm saying. Scavenging among trash and fighting for food. Number two, cow compass. Now let's talk about clever animals. As you probably know, many birds, insects, and even mammals have a fixed movement direction. And now cows and bulls have joined them. A group of German scientists decided to study cows' behavior. It was like a weird topic for an investigation, right? But for many years, farmers paid attention and found something interesting. Scientists also studied images from Google Earth and have confirmed that cattle tend to align their bodies in a north-south direction. While deer also display this behavior, a phenomenon that has apparently gone unnoticed by herdsmen and hunters for thousands of years. In the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, Scientists say the Earth's magnetic fields may influence the behavior of these animals. The Earth can be viewed as a huge magnet, with magnetic north and south situated close to the geographical poles. Many species, including birds and salmon, are known to use the Earth's magnetic fields in migration. How do people be knowing that animals do this specific stuff? You speak animal? I feel like people just be assuming stuff, and I hate that you assuming that they they aligning themselves with the, with the thing, the magnetic field. You don't know. You assuming you don't speak fish, you don't speak bird, you don't speak cow, you don't speak nothing. You is nothing. Rather like a natural GPS. A few studies have shown that some mammals, including bats, also use a magnetic compass to help their sense of direction. Dr. Sabine Beck so from the bet. University of Duisburg, Essen, Germany, has mainly studied the magnetic sense of mole rats, African animals that live in underground top. That's a little dude from Camp Possible, ain't it? Camp Possible. If you want to teach me, I don't want to teach me, it's okay. Whenever you need me, baby. Y'all know, y'all know Kim Possible? Y'all probably too young for that, man. Let me know in the comments down below if y'all know Kim Possible. We were wondering if larger animals also have this magnetic sense, she told BBC News. Before moving to number one on our list, here is an unusual event that happened on January 15th, 1877. Memphians are horrified to discover unusual objects mixed with the rain during a heavy downpour. Umbrellas really aren't much help against thousands of foot-long garter snakes dropping from the sky. 
Most of them very much are oh, unusual wait. objects mixed with the rain during a heavy downpour. Umbrellas really aren't much help against thousands of foot long garter snakes dropping. Thousands of snakes raining from the sky. These snakes is dropping more than the freaking snakes in the OnlyFans DM. That wasn't funny. But it's raining snakes. Imagine you look up and all you see is coming down on your head. Dead. Instantly, just like that. From the sky, most of them very much alive. Investigating the phenomenon, Scientific American magazine pondered where so many snakes could exist in such abundance and suggested that they were probably carried aloft by a Wait, that's not snakes falling. Many snakes could exist in such abundance and suggest No, that's not snake. I think that's like a, that's like stuff falling out of a tree. That's not snakes. That were, Ain't no way that's snakes. That's not snakes, is it? No, I don't think that's snakes. Hurricane and wafted through the atmosphere. Imagine being in that city on that day and having those snakes just literally raining down from above. What would you do? But where are they coming from? Y'all not telling me where they coming from. S snakes don't just come from clouds, bro. Let us know in the comments below. Shut up. Number one, bird that cries hawk. Among the rolling red dunes of the Kalahari Desert, the song of the fork-tailed drongo provides a warning that predators are lurking close by. The songbird acts as the desert's watchdog, always poised and ready to warn its fellow creatures of impending danger. Or at least, that's what the bird wants you to believe. Scientists claim this tricky African bird is in fact a pathological liar in the animal kingdom. Drongos, common in southern Africa, usually get meals the honest way, such as capturing insects in mid-air using their incredible aerial skills. But at other times, like on cold mornings when a few insects are flitting around, the drongos turn to a life of crime. When times are hard, the crafty bird can make false alarms to make other animals drop their kill and run from the scene. Meanwhile, the drongo swoops in to pick up the remains. Wait, so other animals speak crow or bird? Wait, do animals communicate with each other? What's really going on? I don't know. Do it? Can my cat talk to the insect that he eats? Sometimes my cat's being flies. Did he talk to that thing? Because he's saying that the person said that the bird gives a warning to the to the musketeers or whatever the other animals is and it's like a warning thing so he can go in and scoop and get, take their food he's tricking them but how does the musketeers know what the bird is saying do animals speak other animals but sometimes the birds try this tactic too often and when they don't get a reaction researchers have discovered they have another trick up their sleeve vocal mimicry the drongos are able to mimic the sounds made by many different species that inhabit its desert environment these include birds such as pied babblers, glossy starlings, sociable weavers, and pale chanting goshawks, as well as mammals like meerkats. Meerkats, that's what they call it. I call them musketeers. What the heck am I saying? It's track 64, forktail drongos over a span of nearly 850 hours in the Kalahari Desert in South Africa, close to the Botswana border, to unravel this unique behavior. They found that drongos can catch up to 23% of their daily food by making false alarms and stealing their target's dinner. And Man, what's really going on with Earth right now? Bro, we got random snakes, we got birds that can speak every other animal's language. You know what I'm saying? We got the, we got the, uh, what's the, what's the, 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 the freaking fish that stunk up the entire freaking world. I don't know what the heck going on. And I ain't heard of none of this stuff. What part of the Earth did this stuff be happening? Like where? Ain't nobody happening in the United States, man. I gotta get out. Well, I don't wanna go to the rain and snakes place. I don't know about y'all, but. Anyways, this is the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like right now. If you want me to react to anything in specific, y'all know the boss, man. Y'all know the routine. Hit me over there on Instagram at Juvra underscore. You know this part too. Come on. Say it with me. Juvra.com. Buy two. Get that down for free. Or bundle up and save yourself $50. You know what I'm saying? And I'm here. That's really about it. And I'm gonna see y'all. Ayo, C3, so fly, hop out the butterfly Wings to the sky, no, I'm never borderline They choose I, cause I'm way above you The waves make the haters love you When the ladies come through